Hi everyone, my name is Ingrid Mary Percy and I'm the chair of the Visual Arts Program at School of Fine Arts at Grenfell Campus, Memorial University of Newfoundland. Hi everybody, my name is Pete Smith. I work with the Office of Student Recruitment at uh, Grenfell Campus. Before I hand it over to our next person to introduce, um, stick around throughout the presentation. We are going to do a draw at the end for a Grenfell Campus hoodie slash prize pack. So any names that come online, um, we will put your, um, anyone who comments or anything, we'll put your name in for a nice Grenfell Campus hoodie draw. So uh, thanks for joining us and I'll hand it over to our next person to say hello. And that would be me. And uh, my name is Jerry Etienne. I am the chair of the theater program here at Grenfell. Um, and I work in the same place that Ingrid and uh, uh, what's his face works. Uh, Pete, <laughs> welcome. We're glad that we can have you here. I hope you learned lots and lots of stuff about this campus. It's a great place to come, and I'm uh, I'm glad we have this opportunity to speak with you. Hi, my name is um, Larry Weand. I am a visiting professor at Grenfell. Uh, I'm a textiles artist and professor, so I will be talking about all sorts of stuff today. Um, so the uh, order that we're going to do this, um, basically we're going to be having uh, some really lively conversations with, e with each other. We're going to talk about uh, the visual arts program and the theater program. And we're going to go into all the nitty gritty and all the details of um, the programs. After that, we're going to take a little tour of the space at Grenfell. So we're going to look at um, studios. We're going to look at rehearsal spaces, all that fun stuff. Um, around eight o'clock, we're going to be talking to a current student in visual arts and an alumni of the theater department who are going to talk about their student experiences. And after all of that, we're going to have a Q&A period. So you can ask all of your questions. You can include your questions in the Facebook uh, chat and we'll monitor those and we'll get back to those um, uh, at the end of our presentation. So um, I guess I'll just kick things off. So uh, Jerry. Uh, oh, yeah. Side note, this is being recorded. So you'll be able to access this um, on our YouTube account and the Grenfell Facebook. So if you miss something or go over something too quickly or you have questions or you forgot someone's email, you can always go back and look at that on our YouTube account and also on the, the Grenfell Facebook. Um, so Jerry. Can you tell me what makes the theater program special and why potential students should study Grenfell, uh, should study theater at Grenfell? Well, I can. Um, I guess uh, the, the most important thing for you to know is kind of how we're laid out. So let me start with that. Um, we're a four year Bachelor of Fine Arts theater program. We have three full time acting faculty. We have two full time technical theater production faculty. Uh, um, we also have working professionals uh, who teach three master classes each in each stream uh, each year. And we have five full time technical staff. All of us work in the business. Um, uh, and in your four years here, here's what you're going to do. You're going to study theater. You're going to study a little bit of art history. You're going to study some dramatic literature and you're going to study a bunch of elective courses. You're going to take 10 acting or technical theater production classes. You're going to take a directing and design course. You're going to take complete creative control of a production in directed studies, which is a, uh, a class that you'll take in your final year. Um, you're going to be in at least six productions if you're an act in the acting stream. You'll be in 12 productions if you are in the TTP stream, technical theater production stream. Uh, and then you're going to spend eight weeks experiencing the best theater in the world uh, just outside London in the United Kingdom. Um, the, uh, <clears throat> the space that we work in is comprised of, uh, uh, well, we're both in the, same, in the same building. Let me say that first. The visual arts and fine arts are in the same building. So you get the to mingle with the VA students as well, which is always uh, very inspirational, I hope, on both sides. Um, we have a green room, a backstage area, uh, which is our own sort of private lounge for theater students. Uh, we work out of a black box theater, uh, which can be adapted to all kinds of different theater. Uh, we have a stagecraft classroom, a props room, a lighting booth and room. We have a sound classroom, carpentry shop, dressing rooms, wardrobe, wardrobe storage, prop storage, um, and some of the things that are really attractive about our program, I think, 
is that we have a very small class size. We have a great student-teacher ratio, uh, so you get a lot more hands-on learning. It's a very safe atmosphere in which young actors can explore and make mistakes, which I think is really, really important that you feel safe to make mistakes and, and just be able to express yourself. Um, our graduates work. They work a lot. Uh, we have a bunch of summer theater programs in um, professional theater programs in Newfoundland, and um, a great many of our graduates are working in those in those professional companies before they graduate. Graduate, so that's um, I, I think that's excellent. They get a lot of hands-on experiential learning uh, from the professional companies in the province. Um, uh, we're going to help you to develop a portfolio of audition pieces for actors. We're going to help you to develop um, skills that will that that you can use to go on to become a designer if you are uh, so inclined as a technical theater production student. Um, you'll learn a little bit about directing. You'll also um, learn in the acting program. You'll learn about voice. You'll learn about movement, speech, text analysis, some character development stuff acting technique, scene study, monologue work, production etiquette, audition technique, and also something about the business of theater. We want you to know something so that when you when you leave here, you don't step out the doors and say, oh, what do I do now? We give you uh, some help in that area so that when you go, you can go out and get a job. Uh, and as I said, our professionals are, are professionals. Our students work. They do when they graduate from here. We have students that are working at the uh, at every professional theater company in Newfoundland. Uh, we have students that are working at the Stratford Festival, at the Shaw Festival, Soul Pepper Theater Company in Toronto, uh, Cirque du Soleil. We have students working there. We have students at Disney. We have students at various theaters in Toronto and across the country. They work in film, they work in music, and they work in television. Um, and I guess, uh, really, what, what tells the story the best about why I think this is a great theater program that I think you would enjoy, I think I can tell you that best by letting somebody else tell it. Uh, we have a recording of uh, one of our students, Andrew Tremblett, who uh, might give you a little better picture. So if we could just run that video right now, that would be great. For me, theater is this uh, unique experience where nothing will happen the same. A specific audience won't see the same show as the audience the next night. That's really cool. My name's Andrew Tremblett. I'm a fourth year acting student at Memorial University's Grenfell Campus. The Grenfell Campus Theatre Program is a four-year program. Uh, your first year, you kind of do a generalized, um, this is what theatre is. You do your theatre history classes, you do uh, stagecraft and acting. Uh, but then when you get into your second, third, and fourth year, you start to get more specific to what you want to do as an actor or stagecraft. Harlow is a city in Essex, England. 40 minutes outside of London, and going through the program, you, you understand that during your fourth year, you'll do a semester in Harlow. So you get to do your, uh, your rehearsals for your fourth year show, and then in the nighttime, after lunch, you go out to London and you get to see a show. It, it's just a little taste of where you could be if you work hard enough, I think. I think that's what this program is about, is growing and becoming something that you weren't or something that you want it to be or realizing discoveries that you've never really thought about before about yourself about your career about your your uh, your art so there you have it that's why I think this is a great little program that we've got here, and I um, I hope you think it's great too. And um, I'd love if you have any questions about it at all, and I want to chat. I am always very happy to take any emails or anything that you any questions that you might have. Now, what about you, Ingrid? Can you tell me why students might like to come and um, and participate in the visual arts program here at Grenfell? <laughs> I don't know if I can follow that. That was so good, Jerry. Like, oh. I want to do theater now. <laughs> Yay, do!
we'd love to have you. <laughs> that was great. Um, yeah, so like, you know, similar to what Jerry said, so the, the School of Fine Arts at Grenfell, is, it consists of theater and visual arts. And uh, the visual arts program is also a four year DFA program in visual arts. Um, we have 10 faculty members and two of them are art history, visual culture, and eight are in the area of studio. So similar to what Jerry said, the, the ratio of students to faculty members is very small. So you really get sort of one-on-one -on -one attention. We have, um, I think a very a really important thing to note is that this is the only BFA visual arts degree program in the entire province of Newfoundland and Labrador. So if you are a Newfoundlander or, and Labradorian, or if you're not from Newfoundland, Newfoundland and Labrador, but would love to study here in Newfoundland and Labrador, this is the place to come to do a four-year degree. So a four-year BFA in visual arts, it's basically the degree that you would get if you are interested in any kind of visual arts. So if later on, you know, if you want to become a curator, if you want to become a professional artist, even an architect, that this would be the degree that you would start with. So um, what is sort of interesting and exceptional about our program is that we're a small generalist program. If you come to Grenfell to do your BFA in visual arts, you're going to get a wide range of uh, exposure to many different disciplines, drawing, painting, textile and fiber, digital media, printmaking, sculpture, photography, time-based art, performance, all of those you will get a you'll get a sampling of all of those you get to really try new things we have wonderful facilities i have worked personally i've taught at many universities across canada i've taught at emily carr university in vancouver i've taught at the university of victoria and i can tell you from my first-hand experience that the studios and facilities that we have at grenfell campus are on par with all other visual arts programs across Canada. Beautiful big painting studios, wood shop, metal, ceramics area, fabulous print shop with all four areas of print, lithography, intaglio, relief, screen printing. We have analog dark rooms, we have uh, digital uh, technologies, we have a Mac lab, we have a fab lab to do 3D printing. So really, it's this warm, you know, kind of general, wonderful little um, visual arts program. Everyone is really nice in Newfoundland and especially at Grenfell. So, you know, you don't if you're coming from a smaller community uh, in Newfoundland and Labrador, or Atlantic Canada or anywhere in the world, you will feel a sense of belonging and uh, sort of warmth at Grenfell. You're not a number. Every student who, who starts in our program is assigned a faculty member as an advisor, and they are there to help you succeed and to really do the best possible uh, things that you can through your four years. So um, yeah, so in general, you know, we're student focused, we're supportive, uh, helpful, friendly. It's a well-rounded degree similar to what Jerry was saying, you're going to focus obviously on visual arts. So you get to choose from a lot of different uh, courses. And then you also will be taking art history and visual culture, and you'll be taking a slate of elective courses from areas outside of visual arts. So if you have an interest in psychology, for example, or potentially, uh, you know, environmental studies, folklore, anthropology, you get to try all of those things as well, which is one of the really nice benefits of, uh, of attending a university where you're part of a larger institution. Um, we have we have two, we have several technicians that are full time technicians in our program that are there to help you. They're all their artists. All of our faculty members are, are working artists with really established careers in the visual arts recognized across Canada and internationally. 
So you're working with professionals. Um, in terms of the program itself, what you're looking at is when you first enter the program, you get to select from a number of different courses to take in all of those areas that I previously mentioned. As you move through the four years, you can kind of hone in on areas that you're kind of more interested in. So maybe that's textiles and fibers, or maybe it's drawing and painting, or maybe it's uh, computer, uh, computer art. And you can also kind of work in a more interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary way as you move through the four years. By the time you get to fourth year, you're working in an independent project. And the kind of culmination of the degree is participation in a fourth year BFA exhibition, which is a very celebratory and wonderful event that allows you to kind of um, celebrate your, your progress, but also, you know, show the world what you've been working on. Um, yeah, and so I guess, you know, it's, it's very uh, experiential learning is a big part of what we do. Studio practice, along with art history, visual culture, theory, uh, there's uh, opportunities to engage with the community. Um, yeah, in general, it's just a wonderful little program. And yeah, like Jerry said, um, if you have any questions whatsoever, uh, you know, that we haven't answered today or that you that come up later, we're here to help you. Just send us an email and uh, we'd love to talk to you more. So, yes, I guess I'm introducing the next person, but unfortunately my computer just uh, went to sleep. Um, yeah, so so that's basically it. So I guess I'm, I'm just gonna go back to Jerry and say, so Jerry, um, theater has technical theater. Can you tell us a little bit about that? As soon as I unmute, I can. Yes. Um, yeah, we have a, a technical theater program that pretty much covers every discipline that you will ever use in theater. Um, you know, there are there are universities across the country that focus in certain areas. Um, what we try to do with our technical theater production program is to um, is to develop students who are capable in all areas of areas of theater. And that includes stage management, carpentry, uh, stage carpentry, um, drafting, uh, stage lighting, stage sound, scenic painting, rigging, props, and costumes. So when you graduate from our program, what we want, what we want you to be able to do is to walk into any theater company in the, in the country and be able to say to them, um, I can do whatever you want me to do. Um, and it also prepares you um, to go on if you would like and specialize in, in any particular area. And also if you would like to uh, then explore design a little later on, we're not a design school. So if you wanna become a theater designer, um, this will certainly give you the foundation for it. And I think that's really important for designers is to have that kind of foundation to understand the whole picture of theater. That's what you're going to get at Renful. Um, so our tech students learn about every aspect of tech so that so that they have every opportunity that they can possibly have when they graduate finally to um, uh, to go to a theater company and say, what do you need? I can do I can do it all. And, uh, you know, as I said before, our students are working. There is a huge demand now for technicians in theater, especially in Eastern Canada. Um, I think what's happening is that a lot of the professionals who who have been working for a very long time in Eastern Canada are now getting to an age where a lot of them are retiring, actually. So there are a lot of openings opening up, so to speak. Um, and I think that uh, that what we offer at our program uh, is a, uh, you know, a kind of a, uh, we cover the entire scope so that all areas of theater are open for you when you graduate. Um, what else can I tell you? Again, same thing as with the acting program. Our, our class sizes are very, very, very small. Uh, you're going to get to know all of your profs really very, very well. It's not, it's not an institution here. This is, you don't have any kind of a sense of an institution when you come here. It's very much more like a family. And uh, we do care very much for our students because we are very, very close to them all of the time. You get, as Ingrid was saying, a lot of hands-on 
a lot of hands-on training. Um, uh, we do a lot of productions while you're here. I think I already mentioned the number. What did I, what did I, I can't remember what it was. Oh, it was 12, yes, 12 productions for the, for the tech students. Um, the people who are teaching the tech program are uh, technicians and designers who are working in Canadian theater. Some of them work right across the country. Um, and they're, they're very capable people, of course. Um, and uh, they're here to help you. They're here to help and support you. Like I said, one of the one of the greatest things about Grenfell and certainly about the fine arts program is that um, uh, the, the teacher student ratio is very, very good. And you are not ever a number. You know, we do care about our students a lot and we do everything that we do for you. So I think that pretty much covers the technical theater production program for the theater program. Um, what about why don't Larry? Why don't you tell me a little bit about the theater history and, um, uh, or sorry, not the theater history because that's my my side. How about the art history and uh, visual culture? Yeah, thanks, Jerry. So uh, part of our program, a big part of our program, encompasses art history and visual culture, and it's so important to have this in our program because when we become um, uh, you know, artists, uh, we have to be able to uh, think critically about art and also write, be able to write about art and have a wide breadth and understanding of what art is, where it comes from historically, where, where it has gone and where it has come to in a contemporary art setting. So a lot, we have different art history survey classes that cover um, kind of art from prehistoric times to Renaissance and then from Renaissance to the 20th century. Uh, and after those kind of general survey courses, you're able to pick some special topic courses that go into more um, specialized uh, ideas or topics around art, art history, visual culture. Uh, so we have all sorts of different classes like that, um, some of them that'll tackle more like early renaissance, some that will tackle Canadian art, American art, uh, the history and context of, of art and how, how it's been developed over time. Um, so yeah, there's a variety of uh, courses that you can pick and choose from that are really exciting, that really prepare you to be, to, like I said, think critically about art, but also just to uh, understand uh, where art has begun and where it is now and where you fit into that. Uh, so it's super important to have that. Um, also, a very big uh, chunk of art history um, takes place in Harlow and the Harlow experience, but I'll talk a bit about that later. But it's a good segue to come back to you, Jerry, and to maybe if you could tell us a little bit about the theater Harlow experience. Sure. Um, in your fourth year, in your very final semester in the theater program, um, the entire class, your entire class, will travel to Harlow, which is in Essex in England. It's about a 40-minute train ride from London. And um, in New York, you have Broadway. And in London, you have the West End for the finest theater in the English language. Um, while you're in Harlow, what you do is you, you're expected to see at least 15 shows and that includes shows on the West End, or if you can find uh, some interesting nooks that are not on the West End itself, that's fine as well. We also take a trip to Stratford-upon-Avon, and we, um, we explore that area and see a few plays in Stratford. The wonderful thing about going to Stratford is that when the show is over, we all kind of gather at the pub outside of the uh, theater, and uh, we have had some incredible conversations with the companies from these shows, meeting them face to face, talking with them, um, and and really kind of getting to know them. I think we've built some wonderful relationships between our students and uh, the actors who are working at the Stratford Festival in Stratford upon Avon, which is um, you know one of the finest festivals in the world. So you're expected to see fifteen, at least fifteen plays. Some a lot of our students see a lot more than that, and. Um, and then you write reviews for these plays. You tell whoever the professor is that's taking you over uh, what you thought of the plays and why. And uh, we encourage you to look at all the different aspects of the shows that you see, the technical aspects and the acting and the directing and the writing uh, and the theater itself. 
And it's uh, it really is a life changing experience because not only are you seeing these plays, but you're also experiencing the culture that's in London. Uh, a lot of history there, a lot of theater history there for certain. Uh, and you also have access to the rest of Europe. So we we start our day by rehearsing. We rehearse the final production, which is the a fourth year only production. Only the fourth year students are putting the show on. So we rehearse that for a couple of hours. Then we have lunch. And then um, in the afternoon, you usually have a master class, a three hour master class with um, uh well, the actors have a three-hour master class with uh, professional actors who are working in the West End, or have often worked in the West End. They may not be working at the time. Hopefully they're not, because then they'd be too busy. But uh, these are these are actors who have worked in the West End. Uh, they're top-of-the-line people, and uh, we're really, really lucky to have this experience with them. They're also fabulous people. They're really wonderful people, and they, they're, um, again, you know, uh, the teacher... Uh, teacher-student ratio is, is very small. They get to know our student quite well. Um, so that's what the actors do on uh, in the afternoons. The technical theater production students uh, go on field trips to all kinds of places. They see designers at work. They see backstages of all kinds of theaters. They see technicians at their craft, um, which is, you know, it's, it's pretty exciting as well. Uh, then we take trips as well as a full class, and we do things like backstage tours of the National Theatre, which is one of the largest theatres in, I think it is the largest theatre in uh, in London. We do a tour of the Globe Theatre. Uh, we go to Stonehenge. We go to Bath. We, um, it, you know, the tours themselves, it depends on on the year. It depends on the students. It depends on the final project that we're doing there. But um, the tours are, I can guarantee you, uh, wonderful experiences, wonderful cultural experiences. The weekends are yours. And you are, in, you are in just outside London, so you have access to all of Europe. Travel is very inexpensive if you're leaving from London. Leaving from Canada costs you a pretty penny to get to Europe. But once you're there, um, you have access to all the countries there. I had one student one time that on the weekend popped off to Paris and then Amsterdam and then came back from Monday and had a great time. So there's that part of it as well. So it really, it really does become a life changing experience. We're there for eight weeks. We come back, we finish rehearsing our final production and, uh, and then we wow everybody with how wonderful this fourth year class is. It really is a fantastic experience, and I'm, I'm uh, something to look forward to when you come. Um, so that's that's the theater Harlow experience. Larry, can you tell me a little bit about what the visual arts Harlow experience? Absolutely, thanks, Jerry. So um, it's a little bit similar in our context as well, but uh, basically uh, every visual arts student has the opportunity to go to Harlow every other year. And um, it's a 12-week summer in immersion program in Harlow, uh, and it's it's over the spring semester. And essentially, you take daily trips into London, and you experience the culture, you experience the architectural sites, you go to all the museums, you you soak all of that in. You're having a great time, and at the same time, you're doing coursework. So the the coursework occurs at the same time as you're visiting all of these beautiful spaces and all these beautiful uh, sites uh, with uh, Gerard, our wonderful art history prof, who's really great. And um, it's a really unique experience because it's just, I mean, it's just so unique and so great and so wonderful to be able to to see um, everything that's happening in London and the art and the culture and all that great stuff. Um, and you receive credit for doing this. So you get the equivalent of three art history courses for going to Harlow uh, over the summer for 12 weeks. Um, and similarly, the weekends are, are yours, so you can go and explore and do and, and do your own thing. Um, but every single student that has gone to Harlow that has come back has, has come been completely changed by the experience, has had such a blast, and um, it's, a, it's, a, it's absolutely amazing and great. And uh, not a lot of schools do this the kind of thing or have the opportunity to do this this kind of stuff so um it's really really fantastic and and yeah just really really fun um yeah that's that's about it um 
Uh, hey, thanks, Larry. <laughs> I think I'm supposed to jump in at this point and ask Jerry. Oh, I just uh, just following up on what on what Larry just said. I mean, Harlow is incredible. It's I think we're actually the I think the only university in Canada that has a campus. Maybe the, maybe there's one other university that has a footprint in London, but it's incredible that Memorial University has this this campus in London. So. Um, yeah, so I guess, Jerry, can you tell me how would a student apply to the theatre program at Grenfell? Okay, I'll do that. Um, I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of that because I think Pete can probably do a better job of that than I can. Um, but the way you apply to the theatre program specifically is to, uh, to complete the general application. You can see it there on your screen. But what's different about the theater program is that we also need you then to send us a letter of, of uh, why you want to take theater and at Grenfell. And also um, for actors, we would like you to do an audition. Now the audition, I, uh, don't get too terribly nervous because the audition is just as much for you as it is for us. Uh, we would like to find out if this is the right program for you because we don't want you to come here if it's not you know, what you're looking for. Um, so we want to we want to know what it is that you are looking for. At the same time, we we want to see from you if you're ready to be here. So we ask you to prepare just one audition piece. It can be an audition piece of your choice. So you can do Shakespeare if you want to do Shakespeare. You can do a contemporary piece if you want to do a contemporary piece. It has to be fully memorized. It should be three minutes or less. Um, if you are from afar, um, and you want to audition for the program, we do accept um, uh, uh, self-tapes, and you can send them to us. The only thing that we ask about a self-tape is that you don't make any cuts in it. It's just one take from beginning to end, so you can do it as many times as you want until you get it absolutely perfect, but we don't want you to do a little bit cut and then do another little bit and put them together. We will be able to tell, so please don't do that. But a three-minute three minute or less uh, monologue, uh, memorized, of course. And uh, what we ask you to do if you send in a self-tape is just, just take a little second at the beginning of it to have a little chat with us. Tell us, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us uh, why you want to come, why you want to study theater. And tell us why you think Grenfell would be a good fit for you. So that's, that's for actors. We, we need an audition as well. For the technical theater production program, uh, we'd like you to uh, do an interview where we'll talk to you about, you know, how much experience you have, where your interests lie, um, and that that sort of thing. So that, again, we can find out if this is the right program for you, and uh, and we can also find out, you know, where you're coming from and uh, uh, what you've got to offer us, and whether you're ready for our program. So. Um, Pete, I don't know, do you want to go into uh, some more detail about the general audition or general um, application process now? Or were we I'm doing that a little bit further on, Jerry, but uh, okay. thanks for the heads up. Okay, great, great. Sorry. Yeah, Cheers. I went on a trip there for a minute. Oh my gosh, we're in trouble now. But that's uh, all, good. all good, sir. All good. That's, that's how you uh, apply for the theater program. Um, what about visual arts? Uh, who's talking about that? Ingrid, are you talking about that? Uh, I certainly am. <laughs> Thank you for asking, Jerry. Um, yeah, so similar to, to what Jerry was saying, um, the process should be fairly straightforward. Um, so the, the application process is online. If you go to, um, uh, basically there's on our main, yeah, visual arts page there that is coming up. Um, you can go to admissions. There's also just a button on the right hand side, not, I don't think it's on this page. Uh, yeah, not the port. Okay. Andrew's going to the portfolio right now, but basically once you go to, go to the Grenfell visual arts program website and how do it, there's a, there's information on how to apply to the program. And, um, there's a big button that just says apply here. Okay. Apply now. So press on that. Basically, the whole application is online. So you create an account and you you uh, you apply it online. 
And then the one thing that you, you do not, you can't upload to the online portal is your portfolio. So your portfolio, what you will do with that, you'll create a portfolio of images and um, you can either, um, you can put them in a Google Doc and then email the link to the chair of the program, who is me currently. Normally, you know, in the past, before COVID, we were taking um, hard copy, like real portfolios. But due to COVID, that's not really an option anymore at this point. Right now, we're taking uh, digital portfolios. So basically, your portfolio, you're going, your portfolio is your collection of creative work that you're going to show us. So you're going to photograph that work and, you know, Try to photograph it in a way that highlights the work, so sort of uncluttered backgrounds. Um, we have a list on the on the website of, of what your uh, portfolio, what you might want to include in your portfolio, um, and kind of what to watch out for with the portfolio. Basically, with the portfolio, we're, we're looking for anything you do that is creative. So we have a very broad sort of definition of creativity. If you you know, if you make textiles, if you knit, if you sew, if you carve wood, if you draw, if you paint, if you've done ceramics in high school, or if you are already a practicing artist, just show us what you think is your best work. And also show us some of your process as well. If you want to show us sketches or pages from a sketchbook, that's always really informative for us as well. So basically, that's what we're looking for. If you have any issues, if you have any questions about your portfolio, again, always feel free to reach out to us. This is our job. This is what we do. We're, we just are here to respond to people who are interested in coming to our program. And like Jerry has said and, and everyone else, we're very kind of uh, personal one-on-one -on -one, uh, institution. Uh, Grenfell Campus is, is we want you to succeed, we want to help you. So like I said, if you have any questions about anything in the process, reach out to us and let us know. So yeah, maybe that was a bit wordy, but basically apply online, but the portfolio, you're going to send me a link to your Google Doc, or you're going to send me a PDF of your images. The only other thing to include with your images of your portfolio is an image list that tells us a little bit about each piece. What's the medium? What's the size? And you can even include, if you like, a sentence about what you were thinking. You know, why, why did you make this thing? And, and why did it, why did that subject interest you? So like Jerry, you know, we're, we just want to get to know you a little bit. And um, don't worry about having perfect work. You're here to learn. We're not expecting you to be a fully formed artist at all. We just want you to have a passion for the arts and for learning. We will take care of the rest. Okay, we're, we're, so don't, don't stress about the portfolio. Just show us and tell us why you love art. So, um, yeah, I guess, I think, it's over uh, me. Are we yeah, yeah, it's over Jerry, yeah. I just, I just, yeah, wanted... over to you, yeah. I just want to follow up on what Ingrid said. I, I think that's a really good point. Don't stress that, you know, you're not, uh, uh, you know, that don't be nervous about what you've got to do because what we're looking for is we're looking for the desire. We're looking for the spark. That's what we're looking for. If you've got that, we can help you to take the next step. That's what our job is. So, you know, if you're feeling unsure, give it a shot. Do it. Go for it. Um, Okay, the other thing that I want to, I don't know if you're going to say this or not, Pete, but um, the deadlines for, um, for the application. Oh, why don't I leave that for you, Pete? I'll leave that for you. Um, so Pete's going to take it now and, uh, and talk to us about the general um, applications for Memorial. Awesome. Thanks, Jerry. So basically, you've got information on how to apply to you know, visual arts or theater. But in order to do that, you also have to fill out our Memorial University general application. Very, very simple process. It's all found online now. So go to our website, which I will put in the chat uh, comment, uh, the chat area there, along with uh, emails for Jerry, Ingrid, and so forth at the end. 
Go to our website, go to the application section where it says apply now. You create a small profile for yourself, and then basically you walk through the application process. So generally when it says what uh, campus you want to attend, you select Grenfell Campus and your, uh, you know, your entry term, which hopefully will be the fall of 2021. You'll um, select your area of interest, so it'll be fine arts, and then you'll select your focus area, whether it's theater or um, visual arts, it's as simple as that. And basically, to make this really, really short, because um, I could go on like this for a while, but um, basically, if you're a high school student in Newfoundland, Labrador, we look at five level three subjects. So English, math, a lab science, social science, or uh, language and an elective in level three. And for those, they have to work out to an all around 70 average. So if you meet those requirements, you get general admission into Memorial University. Now, of course, for theater and VAs on your, you know, your addition in your portfolio. But I will also point out if there's anybody else joining us from uh, another part of the country, Canada or internationally, please get in touch with us about the uh, the application process because it's a little bit different for you guys than it would be for Newfoundland and Labrador students. So again, um, I'll put the email in the uh, comment section. And if you're interested about, you know, the, the general application process, please get in touch with me. Our deadline for a general application is um, February the 1st. I think for uh, theater, Jerry can certainly correct me, it's March the 1st. And I think for visual arts, it's still uh, February the 1st. Um, and Ingrid and Jerry can certainly correct me if I'm wrong on that. Yeah, March, visual March. arts is March 1st deadline. Theater is, theater is uh, March 31st. Oh, March go. 31st, that's right. So, yeah. per so there you have it. So, uh, I mean, if you're interested in getting those portfolios and an audition ready, certainly um, touch base with Jerry or Ingrid and uh, make sure you get that general application in as well. Fairly simple process, go online, and uh, it only takes uh, a few minutes to do. I think that's me. I think it's back over to uh, back over to Jerry. Over to you, Jerry. Oh, uh, no, actually it's me, but I had another question for you, Pete. Uh, actually, I just want to know uh, basically a little bit about uh, first year students and what to expect uh, if they want to, if you, if you want to live on campus and what uh, the process and that is. Awesome. Sorry about that, Jerry. Thanks, Larry. Yeah, so to be a first year student on campus is actually a lot of fun. Uh, things are a little bit different this year because of uh, COVID, but hopefully for, for 2021 uh, in the fall, we'll be certainly back on track. So basically, we have residences at uh, Grandpa Campus, and actually about half of our student body live in residences. I don't know if you can see, I'm kind of turned around, but this building right here is actually our brand new residence complex. What's really unique about Grenfell Campus is that every student at Grenfell Campus gets what's called a semi-private room. So technically you do have a roommate who you can request if you wish, and you're basically uh, paired up with that roommate, uh, but you have your own little room. You're divided by a wall and a door. So you only share washroom facilities with that one under other individual. So you're not sharing them with like a full um, a floor of people, or you're not in a, a room with another individual. And uh, all our residences also have uh, kitchenettes as well. So the meal plan we offer at Grenfell Campus is optional. You don't have to purchase it if you don't wish. So basically you can have your own little cubby in our kitchenette area, store any pots and pans and so forth. So it's, it's a really fun kind of social atmosphere, uh, everyone cooking together and so forth. Um, and of course, residence has a lot of safe, fun social activities as well. I mean, they go skiing. I mean, they do, you know, um, events out in the town of city of Corner Brook, a bunch of social events. So uh, it certainly is a really, really great place. And of course, all our residences, one of our residences actually joined right to all the buildings. And the uh, residence complex, which I just showed you, is literally about a each second a walk away from actually the, the Fine Arts building. So it's uh, it certainly is a lot of fun to live on campus. And again, what's really unique about us is that you get your own room. Uh, you go to the housing website on our uh, Grandville Campus website to apply. Uh, pretty simple process once again. And just say you come to campus and you don't know anyone on campus. Um, the housing application is sort of like a dating profile. Uh, you fill some personal information about yourself. So they'll usually pair you up with somebody with uh, a like-minded mindset. So um, again, fantastic place to live, grow and study in residence on uh, Grandville Campus. 
Now I think I'm supposed to hand it over to Jerry. So over to you, good sir. Okay then. Now comes a, a kind of a fun part of the presentation. Um, a couple of years ago, we did something like this, and um, we took some videos uh, to show uh, various spaces on our campus and uh, to introduce you to some of the people who work on our campus. This year, because we're in the middle of a pandemic, that's been a little more difficult for us to get together. So what you're about to see now uh, are people who are going to be saying thanks. Uh, thanks a lot to sorry about this, stop, uh, saying thanks a lot um, to Andrew. Andrew is, uh, is not saying anything tonight because he's the one who's kind of our technician tonight. The last time we did it, Andrew and I were the hosts. So, so please ignore all these people that are talking about this fella named Andrew. Andrew is not here. He is here, but he's not here this time. <laughs> um, so this is going to be fun, I think. These are these are all videos from a couple of years back, but they should give you a very, very good idea of our space and some of the people who work there. Now, oddly enough, the first person that you're going to meet, Wendy Vey, <laughs> just retired last year. So Wendy is no longer our head of wardrobe. Our head of wardrobe is Elizabeth Perry, who is equally as charming and wonderful, but we just didn't get it together to get a video with her this year because of all kinds of, as I'm sure you can understand, all kinds of circumstances that prevented us from doing that. Um, in this video, she's working on Twelfth Night, which is uh, Grenfell's final production uh, from two years ago. And um, uh, that's what she's probably going to be talking about. And we're about two weeks from opening when we did this. So let's see what Wendy was up to a couple of years back. Uh, thanks, Jerry. So this is the wardroom at Grenfell. Um, this is where we build most of the costumes for each production. We have on occasion rented and borrowed from other theater companies. But what happens in this room is uh, our designers for the show, for our professor designers, will bring me in costumes. So for instance, this right now we're working on a Twelfth Night, which is being set in a futuristic space world. So Debbie, for instance, is working on one of the parts of this dress right here. She's going to be putting this piece on the bottom of the skirt. And I have been working on, I've been working on, I don't know where that picture is, probably over here. <laughs> oh, right here, this one here. So I'm working on putting this top together right here. So I've drafted a pattern and I've made a mock-up. And now I'm getting to the fun part where I get to take all these pieces and I've taken the patterns and they'll be positioned right here and then sewn in place. So basically that's what we do in this room. We've been known to build hats. We often build decorations. We put together jewelry pieces. Um, we do a lot of fun and interesting accessories for costuming. And uh, it's a small space, but we get a lot done. Thanks, Wendy. That was great. Wherever you are right now, <laughs> it's great to hear from you. Um, the next space we're going to see is our, is our rehearsal hall. Um, that's where we're gonna, if you're in the acting program, you're going to be spending a good deal of your life when you come to Grenfell. Um, you can take all your acting courses there. You're going to be rehearsing main stage productions there. Uh, you're going to learn uh, the actor's responsibility, basically, in, in uh, making a production. From the very first read-through, to the table work, to blocking rehearsals, to runs of the show, to tech rehearsals, to opening night, you'll work on taking the script from the page to the stage. And you'll learn about voice and speech and movement, as I said before, and how you can use that to express yourself as an actor. You'll study um, and analyze texts to get the most that you can out of them. Uh, you'll be studying some classical and Shakespearean texts as well as more contemporary texts. Um, what else? Um, you're gonna work on character development. Um, you'll develop awareness that, uh, about what surrounds you on the stage and learn how to really listen when you're acting and really communicate with the other actor. 
They talk about empathy and relationships and status and stakes and objectives and obstacles and much, 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 much more. You're going to spend a lot of time in this room. You'll even learn a little bit about clowning. So um, uh, where are we? We're in the middle again of Twelfth Night Rehearsals from two years ago. Uh, and uh, we're in the middle of a fight rehearsal in this video. So uh, I'll just let that video run and give you an idea of that space. I must have an ounce or two of this malapart blood from you. Thank you. Cool. That's it. That feel better, wouldn't it? Like with that flow, yeah. yeah it it looked a lot better. Yeah. Cool. Um, you guys both feel good? Yeah. 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 Awesome. Let's move on. So uh, yeah. onto the duel. Right. So we're gonna introduce swords today. So. Andrew and Viola. They're in sheets when you guys have them at, at initially. Go in these. Those sheets. Yeah, because they get brought out and laid on the cubes and then they go there. And right, they're taken out of the sheets and they're left behind. Yeah. By the time I get the glory. Okay, perfect. Don't deal with these. So, they're sheets steel, they do bend. Um, they've got vinyl grips on them. I'm a little concerned that if hands get sweaty, they might be slippy. So, if yeah, I can see that. Yeah. If you do start to get a bit of a, a clammy hand, feel free to say stop because that's a concern of mine. Right. But yeah, there's hilts so now, so your hands are a bit more protected than with the uh, sticks. Mm -hmm. But yeah, let's keep it at fifty percent for now, and yeah, nice and light on the force because there's a lot more weight you're swinging around. Yep. Beautiful. Okay, so that's our that's our rehearsal hall. A little taste of it. Um, and the next space that we want to just take you to briefly is uh, our stage, where we're not a pole. Is uh, two years ago. Um, uh, our stage is, is modeled after the Dorfman Theater, which is um, uh, the smallest stage at the uh, National Theater in London. Um, it's very very flexible. We've done all kinds of different shows on that stage. Uh, it seats about 175 people, and uh, like I said before, you're going to be doing a lot of shows in that space. Um, whether you're an actor or a technician, you're going to be busy from Monday through Thursday from 7 until 11 every night um, working on the shows that we do. So while all the other students on campus are out partying and studying and writing their essays, you're going to be stuck in that rehearsal hall working. It's a tough course, right? You really have to learn about time management. Um, and uh, you're going to be challenged when you come here. Anyway, enough about that. Let's, <clears throat> let's, uh, let's have a look at Renata, who's designing the set and costumes for Twelfth Night. See what she's up to. Thanks, guys. Okay, so my name is Renata Pohl. I'm an assistant professor here in the theater department, and I work on the technical theater production side of things. I'm also a resident designer, so we do a little bit of design and also technical work. So I'm gonna give you a little tour of our theater and show you what we're doing right now. So as you can see, this is a set that we're standing on right now. It's in progress, and it's gonna be for Twelfth Night, which is going to be the final production of the season, which the graduating class will be acting in. And also, all of our tech students are working on to help build and paint the actual set. So I'll tell you a little bit about what they've helped to do. So you can see there's a lot of paint <laughs> going on here. The floor is painted, and we actually have kind of a rocket ship sort of thing over here, and we've got a grand staircase going up here. And we're in progress of making the whole thing sort of look like a metal a little bit, but the idea is that it's sort of like an abstract uh, moonscape or it's a set on another planet because we're basically setting it in outer space. So it's Shakespeare in space, but it's an imaginary space. So we've also taken some liberties. And if you look at the floor carefully, I don't know if the camera can pick it up. We've got some lines on the floor. And that's to kind of give it um, a surrounding feeling. So what that does is actually draws the audience attention into the, towards the center. So these are the kind of things that we think about. So we have to think about the artistic nature of it as related to the acting, as well as how do we make that actually happen with the paint. So one of the things that I teach the students is how to do these actual techniques. 
And it takes many layers, more than you might think, to actually paint a set. So if you can see, on the floor itself, we start with a base layer, and then we do a mixed layer of paint to kind of create depth with lots of darks and lights. On top of that, we've done a silver glaze with a water-based glaze. And then on top of that, we've used lining stick tools to create these lines. So throughout this whole process, I'm teaching students how to see the different layers, how to create the different layers, and then how to work with the tools. In addition, we also work with considering safety. So for example, I'm wearing knee pads, and we have to kind of think about types of paint we're using and uh, where we can use it and what kind of safe spaces. So paint that we can't use in here, for example, are oil-based things. So we actually have a fan in the carpentry shop that we use to do work like that. So that's another consideration, and that's the kind of thing that we teach students here. Now, that said, I'm going to introduce you a little bit to the set itself, because our master carpenter, Dirk Muir, has created this wonderful rocket ship. Now you can see it's actually big enough for someone to walk through, so I'm actually going to walk through here, and uh, hopefully the cable will reach. And I can actually go all the way around, and eventually Malvolio will be standing here, and he'll be acting, and there will actually be a window here but you'll still be able to hear him. So that's gonna be a fun scene where he's kind of trapped in a jail, but it's also a rocket ship. And so there's lots of room to walk around. The actors, one of the things that they do is they get used to walking around the space as well. So we try to incorporate time with the actors in the space, as well as giving our technicians and designers enough time to also work in the space. And students help out with all of this stuff. So not only set painting and also construction, techniques, but also things like lighting and sound. So that's uh, something that you might not immediately think of when you think of theater. But if you look around, there's a lot of lighting pipes. And uh, right now, most of our lights are hung up ahead, and we're in progress right now of hanging the lights. So not, they're not all in here yet, but they're all going to be hung, and we'll start focusing them uh, and doing levels, which are cues, next week. So the students will be in helping out with that as well. And so last night I was in here and the students were helping to patch the lights, cable them, learn how to run the board to, run, to work the cues themselves. And these are the other kinds of things that the students learn to do. And also, of course, there's also sound. And that changes show to show. But sometimes what we also need to do is figure out where can we run cables for mics and things like that. And also, how do we construct sound cues and what sounds really good in the theater to actually create a kind of a soundscape for the show. So if you look up high, 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 you'll see the booth where our sound recording studio is located. And students will work in there with Louis McDonald to create some sound cues, which then get run from the booth at the back of the theater there. And you can see some tables there all set up. So we have our stage management students in there running the show. And they're kind of like the flight crew on a plane, as it were. So they keep things running smoothly during the whole show itself. So I think that's about everything in here. There's lots more I could talk about. I could go on for days and days. But the students really create the whole thing with our guidance, and they do it as if it were a working lab. So everything they do in here, we try to create with a kind of a professional etiquette and, and using professional skill sets so that when students get out into the working theater world, they kind of have a replica already of how to work so they can enter professional theater knowing exactly what to do. And that's it for me. So back to you guys. That was, that was wonderful. Um, yeah, I think, I think what I just got from that, uh, that I don't think we've really mentioned yet is the fact that we are really focused on health and safety in the School of Fine Arts. And, uh, you know, part of our, both of our programs is uh, health and safety uh, women's courses. So it's a big part of what we do in both visual arts and theater is, is learning about health and safety. Um, I'm going to introduce Matthew, uh, who is the director of the uh, art gallery the Grenfell Art Gallery. Um, and, you know, that's something that we didn't mention, early, mention earlier as well, is just how lucky we are to have a, a, a gallery as part of the Fine Arts Pro, School of Fine Arts. The gallery serves uh, as a space for students to work in as MUSEP students. So we have physicians 
where students can work in the gallery. Um, it's a professional gallery. It serves the larger public of Western Newfoundland. Uh, Matthew Hills, who's the director, has an MA in Critical and Curatorial Studies from the University of British Columbia. And prior to being the director of the Grenfell Art Gallery, has worked in numerous uh, university galleries across Canada, as well as at the Vancouver Art Gallery. So let's have a tour of the Grenfell Art Gallery. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, welcome to the Grenfell Art Gallery. Grenfell Art Gallery is Memorial University's art gallery. Um, we are open year-round with exhibitions of uh, artists from Newfoundland and across the country and international exhibitions as well. We are Memorial's University Art Gallery, meaning that we care for Memorial's art collection as well as have an exhibition space here at Grenfell Campus. We're an educational resource for the students here on campus uh, as well as staff and faculty, and we're also the public gallery for the western region of Newfoundland. I want you guys to come in and take a look at uh, our exhibition space and what we have to offer. Um, as you enter, you'll notice we have a reading space that includes catalogs and uh, magazines from across the country, the best in art publications as well as art periodicals with art criticism and uh, coverage of exhibitions from across the country and artists from uh, the best Canadian artists uh, the catalogs can offer. So come on into the exhibition space. Grenfell Art Gallery is a um, Category A space, meaning that we're rated with the Department of Canadian Heritage to care for art and present art that is a cultural property and national significance. So we have exhibitions from across the country as well as featuring exhibitions by artists from uh, Newfoundland and Labrador. Currently we're showing a film by a Vietnamese filmmaker, uh, Tuan Andrew Nagan, and it's a short 40 minute film. Unfortunately, it's not fantastic for showing on camera, but I do encourage you to come in and take a look if you get a chance. It's on until April 6th. We have this larger exhibition space, which is a uh, thousand square feet of exhibition, a really large and wonderful exhibition space. But we also have a smaller media room that we currently have some prints up by uh, Heather Lear, who's a former print professor in the uh, department. So I'm going to take you into that smaller gallery and we'll get a chance to look at some smaller prints. They're really sweet little prints and uh, they reward some up close uh, contemplation. So come on in. The School of Fine Art uh, has been around for 30 years and has an excellent reputation nationally for uh, educating uh, students, but also for uh, printmaking. It has a fantastic print studio. I think Robin Anderson has toured you through that space as well. But part of that is uh, print artists um, from Newfoundland and print professors here are very active. And uh, some of the exhibition activity that happens at the gallery documents that, those activities and uh, supports the professors and artists. So you'll see here a selection of prints by women printmakers from across North America. They're considering issues of memory and trauma and um, channeling uh, concerns around uh, memory and how someone remembers trauma and how someone processes trauma. So you can see the different approaches to that in the printmaking techniques. There's a variety of techniques, intaglio, photo transfer, uh, relief, and you'll see also a variety of work. This is by uh, Newfoundland artist Jacqueline Barrett. Um, you can also see here print professor Heather Lear, who curated the exhibition and who is a past print professor at uh, Grenfell. Um, you also see artists from uh, San Francisco, from Edmonton, um, from across North America. And it's really interesting work that rewards uh, up close uh, examination, which is one of the advantages of having the uh, gallery here at the School of Fine Art for students to uh, really get up close and personal and research artwork. We have Instagram and social media and social media presence on Twitter and Facebook. I would encourage you to follow and uh, find out other programs and exhibitions that we're doing. We're constantly changing shows and we have regular programming that's always free for students and free for the public to attend and enjoy. So um, once you come to Grenfell, I hope you drop in and uh, say hello and introduce yourself and uh, um, look forward to seeing you soon.
All right. Well, that was the gallery. It's an awesome space to be in and to have right right in, inside of our, our building, which is really, really great. Um, next up, we are going to take a tour of the sculpture studios in VA. Um, and to take you through the sculpture studios, we're going to um, meet David, who is a wonderful, wonderful a wealth of knowledge when it comes to anything having to do with the sculpture studio. He has an MFA from the University of Saskatchewan and is a really wonderful practicing artist. And what I particularly love about David is that you can go into the sculpture studio with an idea um, and a couple of sketches and he will help you make that happen. And it's magical and wonderful. So uh, David will take you through the sculpture studio. Thanks guys. Welcome to the Sculpture Studio. Uh, my name is David Dick. I'm the technician here. Uh, I'm just going to tour you through the space and we'll take a look at what we've got going on in here. So first thing we'll find in here is the clay room. Uh, we do all the ceramic work uh, based out of this room. So we can see uh, just a good complement of uh, clay working equipment here. We've got slab rollers, uh, general tools. We have a couple of pottery wheels. Uh, and then we've got a number of kilns to fire objects uh, to get them to their final finish. All right. So we're going to back out and take a look at the rest of the studio. Uh, our general studio space, uh, a couple of rooms here. We just have tables that uh, get reconfigured for whatever use is appropriate for the day. Uh, most of our uh, lessons happen in here. And then we have another side to the studio here that is a bit more dedicated to larger projects. Uh, and can also be reconfigured to suit whatever purpose. Uh, you'll see a few of our cabinets of tools and stuff open. Uh, so people are using those uh, during working hours. We also have uh, after hours access given by our studio monitors. So lots of access to the space. So next we'll head into the metal shop. And we use this space for metal working, uh, whether that is uh, cutting and forming metal or welding metal back together. And one interesting thing that we like to point out, uh, we've got a, a small vacuum casting setup here. Uh, so we use this for casting small bronzes mainly. Uh, there are some students who work with silver and other material like that as they progress. Um, and just down under here, we see our complement of welders. So we've got a MIG welder, TIG welder, uh, stick welder and a plasma cutter. Uh, and then we just have some general metal forming equipment here um, to fill out the rest of the space. All right. So moving on. We'll head into our wood shop. So in the wood shop, we'll see uh, a set of tools uh, devoted to uh, wood forming. Uh, we've got a, a miter saw, a table saw, band saw, and drill press, uh, along with a belt sander over here. Uh, and one recent addition is the CNC router. So we've just begun using that uh, within the past year. It's been very helpful for a number of projects. Uh, 
collaboration with the theater program. Uh, we did use it to build uh, a number of set pieces uh, for a show last term. Uh, and you can see the, the profiles left from some of the things that have been cut. Um, also did a project for the Fine Arts Office where we built some furniture for them. So we're just starting to understand what we can do and uh, sort of bring this into the thought process of making work in the space. Uh, this is tied in with the fab shop uh, just down the hall on the first level of fine arts as well. Um, so you'll see stuff down there that is more like laser cut and 3D printer. Um, so all sorts of digital fabrication tools available there. Um, one other thing we could look at, uh, we do have an outdoor space for making work. Uh, we're in the middle of uh, late winter now, so it's a, under a little bit of snow. Uh, during the fall uh, term, though, students use that to make uh, larger work uh, and messier work outdoors. So there's some stone carving that happens out there. Um, That was great. Super. Um, yeah, so I am going to introduce uh, the next video, which is uh, a video of Robin Anderson, who is also one of our visual arts technicians. Uh, Robin's going to be giving you a little tour of our amazing printmaking facilities. Uh, just a little bit about Robin. Robin has, she, Robin's actually an alum of the Grenfell Visual Arts Program. Um, did her BFA at Grenfell and did an MFA at the University of Saskatchewan and then moved back to Newfoundland and uh, taught in our program briefly and now is our wonderful technician. Um, yeah, so just, I mean, it's, we're, we're so lucky to have all of our faculty members in the studio program in visual arts, as well as our staff members as practicing artists. So take it away, Robin. Thanks, Andrew. Um, so this is our print studio. We're in the main space right now, which is uh, for intaglio and other processes. Uh, these are beautiful large printing uh, beds. We do the four main types of printmaking, uh, which are intaglio, lithography, relief, uh, and silkscreen or uh, serigraphy. Um, we're going to show you the litho room there now, and you guys can see our big old uh, stone collection. Um, so what's great about our program is that we do have both new processes and old processes, and we often combine them. Uh, and the research of the professors allows us to have uh, new processes involved. So with uh, relief, uh, we're now working with the uh, uh, engraver, the laser engraver downstairs and doing four color relief blocks. So you can do full color reliefs, which are amazing. Um, so this is our litho room, nice and big. We have two more press, best, press beds over there. Um, our huge stone collection, which is amazing. Um, it's a very physical process, uh, uh, detail oriented. I really like it. Oh, I'm Robin, the print technician here. I'm sorry, I'm not sure if I was supposed to introduce myself. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's take a look at the silk screen room. Um, what else about the program here? Uh, so after you do your first uh, introductory classes, uh, we can you actually move on to more advanced processes. Um, usually focused it with uh, photography. Uh, this is silk screen room. Uh, here's where our uh, uh, where you would do be doing silk screen with our suction tables. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's a huge studio. It's beautiful. Uh, like we were just talking about before we began filming, the views outside are amazing. There's lots of natural light, that kind of thing. Um, we also have a great focus on safety which is amazing. So we've just, uh, when it comes to our acid booth where we do our etching for intaglio, uh, we've just had it all upgraded so that we're keeping students safe, um, orientations in the entire program, uh, and especially in the studio are very safety focused because we want our artists to have very long, um, solid careers uh, and safe ones and healthy ones as artists. 
uh, yeah, and we'll show you guys some examples of the old work that uh, hangs out in our collection for printmaking. Uh, we have uh, an intaglio. Uh, that's another intaglio, a process called um, uh, mezzotint. Uh, this is one of the four color uh, reliefs that I was talking about that uh, we do with the laser engraver downstairs. Um, lithography uh, and uh, silk screen some uh, more color intaglios farther back there. Uh, let's check out uh, the acid booth, I guess. Uh, we also have a dark room for all our uh, photo processes that have to happen in the dark. Um, so this is our acid booth that we just had uh, renovated. It's a little tight in there, but uh, it makes sure that we can do the uh, etching for intaglio plates really safely. Um, we also use a lot of uh, chemical solvents and things like that, so keeping them in here keeps the, the uh, scent and uh, exposure contained, so it's really nice. Um, yeah, so that's about it, I suppose. Uh, thank you, and I guess back to you. All right, so up next, uh, we're gonna be looking at the photography studios and to show you around uh, is one of our professors here, Mark Lausier. He has an MFA from Ryerson and um, is our, our, our photographer, photography prof. What's really cool is that we have dark rooms. So we uh, can tackle both analog and digital photography. So without further ado, we're gonna take a look at that. Hi, Andrew and Jerry. Uh, so my name is Mark Lozier. I am the photography professor here at Grenfell, and I'm here to show you around our analog photography studio. So follow me. So welcome to the Grenfell Photography Studio. Um, as you can see, we have uh, our processing sinks here. We do uh, film processing in black and white. Uh, all the way from 35 millimeter up to eight by 10. And we also accommodate historical photographic processes as well. We have some exposure units here um, to my left. Um, you'll notice we have a fridge here. We used to store our traditional photographic papers and films. And if you follow me here, we also have a smaller digital space, which complements our Mac lab on campus, where we have two large format printers with uh, computer systems and a scanner. And we do a lot of our digital testing here as well. If you follow me this way, we'll make our way into the dark room. So this is the Grenfell photography dark room. This is where we do all our traditional tray processing. We do black and white in here, and we'll also work with some historical processes such as cyanotype and platinum palladium. We have eight enlargers in this space, um, which accommodate film from 35 millimeter to four by five. Uh, you notice that each station has a safe light and an easel. And um, this is our main processing sink as well with the chemistry in here. And this is our ventilation. So everything is nicely ventilated. So make sure that the air is nice and clean and fresh in this space. Um, that's pretty much it for the analog photography studio. I'm gonna send it back to Jerry and Andrew. All right, awesome. So I am going, I am not Jerry or Andrew, but um, I'm Ingrid. Um, so I just want to introduce you to the next person on our tour, which is Charlotte May Hobden. And uh, Charlotte, is, at the time that this video was taken, was a fourth year student in our program. Uh, Charlotte has since graduated uh, with her BFA in 2020 and is a practicing artist and a wonderful member of the arts community of St. John's, Newfoundland and Labrador. So let's hear from Charlotte. Uh, thanks guys, I'm Charlotte and I'm gonna show you the fourth year studio. Uh, this space is designated for the fourth year students to work on our independent project. 
Um, part of the program is that we get to meet with an advisor every week and they act as our mentors to work towards our independent project they'll show in the final exhibition. So I can show you around. This studio is a lot like the designated drawing studio or the painting studio, but just it's designated for fourth year, so we all get our own space. And you can see that we work uh, in a variety of mediums like textiles or the, the painting you saw back there. And yeah, I'm, I'm really thankful for the space. It's open until 2 a.m., so you can really hunker down and get some work done. And yeah, that's all I have for you, and back to you guys. All right, so we're going to just loop right back to Robin, who uh, Ingrid introduced earlier on, who's the, uh, who was the print technician. And we're going to take a look at the Mac Labs that we have. Okay, thanks, Andrew. Uh, hi, guys. It's Robin again. I'm going to show you through uh, AS3009, uh, AS which is our digital film lab, or the Mac Lab, I guess, as it's more known colloquially. Um, so, yeah, come on in. Um, it's a great room. It's super state of the art. You can see there's a couple students working there now. Um, lots of computers, and I'll actually show you up around to one of our beautiful printers. Uh, there's a couple of large-scale printers on campus, which is great for if you're working large format, uh, especially digitally. Um, all the computers have access to Photoshop, uh, Illustrator, all of the big software things that you could possibly need uh, to do your digital editing, which is amazing. And it's also open uh, all the time, so you can kind of come in and work at your own pace so long as there's no class here. Uh, and yeah, here's our beautiful big scale Canon uh, with some paper loaded into it, uh, and it's perfect for large scale printing. Um, yeah, uh, lots of screens up uh, that uh, lots of the teachers use for, te um, they project from the computer that the teacher is working on so that students can follow along for step by step instruction. Uh, yeah, and that's about it. All right, that concludes our video tours. Um, and it's just, it's so great to have all of these resources and um, just all of this available to you on campus um, because it's just, yeah, it's, it's so great to just have all of that available to you. Um, so next up, we're going to hear from a few students. Uh, I get one current student and one who has graduated. Uh, so our current student, Shireen, in visual arts, uh, is a, a, a wonderful student of mine. Uh, she's great. She's so we're going to take it away. So Shireen, um, can you maybe just tell us a little bit about yourself and also just tell us a little bit about your experience as a student here at Grenfell and in the visual arts department? Thank you. Uh, I'm Shireen Merchant and I'm in my third year right now. I just started my third year. And uh, so it's it's been amazing journey. Like uh, I didn't expect it to be this good because uh, I'm from another country. I'm from originally from Pakistan and uh, over there, it's like a bigger city I come from. And here it's like, it's like a small place. But what I like about Grenfell is the class size and you, I get more attention when I'm studying and it's just amazing to learn more. And your professors are involved uh, in the process also. They guide you throughout. It's just, uh, I feel like when you, the, the class size is small or you get more attention, I think I, I, I learned better as compared to uh, other people who are maybe in universities where are, there are big class sizes. Yeah. Thanks so much, Shireen. I have a guest too. Allie, are you there? This is Alice Kelly, uh, who graduated from the program a few years ago and actually now um, uh, comes as a guest artist to teach from time to time in the program and is working uh, quite constantly. In fact, I'm surprised you were able to stay this long. She's very, very busy right now. So, Ellie, why don't you, why don't you tell us um, uh, from your perspective 
what you thought of the Grenfell Theatre program. Be nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's my list. Um, no, thanks for having me, Jerry, and everybody else. It's nice to see everyone. Um, normally, this time of year, I'm on campus teaching in the program. Generally, I teach the first year students, and I teach the third year students. So this is my sixth year teaching at the school. Uh, but my first year teaching from St. John's. Um, I graduated from the program in 2010. So like what actually is not recently anymore. Um, and since then I have gotten my master's in fine arts at York University in 2013. I finished there in 2015. Um, I am a primarily a theater actor, but I've worked in film and television and I mean, I can go on about the things that I've done, but probably it would be best to start by saying that um, the foundation of everything that I know comes from my studying at Grenfell, um, where I started in 2006. So um, I think the thing that is really important to point out about the program is how many people that I left school with and have since um, uh, taught or um, knew from my time as a student there that um, go on to work. It, the the percentage of graduates who stay in the field is actually pretty remarkable when you look at theater schools across Canada um, because, of course, it's a pretty difficult job and you have to really, really want to do it. And the amount of students who leave Grenfell and have the um, like a, enough of a, of a um, diverse set of skills and have also been instilled with... Um, like a very unique love of the work is is very high compared to other theater programs that I know about. So um, I feel like that's a really important thing to consider. And I'm actually not sure what the magical thing is with that. Like why so many people who graduate from Grenfell go on to have careers in the arts. But I will say like I collaborate with lots of people who, you know, own their houses because they're artists and we all went to Grenfell. So I think, um, that is like a really strong reason to explore potentially coming to the school. Um, something else that I really loved about my time at Grenfell was, again, and this was just mentioned, but how intimate the class sizes are and how much attention is given to you as an individual. Um, it's like there's a lot of time and space by the faculty made for you and your questions and your concerns. Um, I feel that was my experience when I went to school at Grenfell. And I also feel like that's something that I try to uh, perpetuate as a teacher at the school, as a visiting teacher at the school. Great. Thank you, Allie. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, you're so welcome. Is that good? That was excellent. Thank you. <laughs> okay, awesome. Phew. I thought you were going to trash us, but you didn't. No, that's for later. <laughs> okay. Can I, that was that was great can i jump in for a second um i just wanted to say that you know that that idea of uh you know so many people working in theater after they leave grenfell i think there's something that happens the, that there's this kind of sense of community that's built in the program and it happens in visual arts as well so that when people graduate they they kind of have this support group um, in in the arts like either in theater or in visual arts and it's like you really are part of this family that you continue to have those friends forever you know forever and i've noticed that with our grads who moved to st john's and are all working in the arts and they still continue to hang out and support each other and Mm -hmm. You find your collaborators is what I would definitely say. Um, you find the group of people that mesh with you. And even like my cohort that I did my master's with, I adore and they're very close friends of mine. But it's not the same as like, for example, one of my closest friends, Megan Greeley, who's from Cornerbrook, we went through the theater program together at Grenfell. And I just found a, like a letter she gave me when we graduated in 2010. And um like we're doing a play together in May. Like, you know what I mean? And that's 11 years after finishing the program, um, like 15 years since we met each other. So those kind of, and we've kind of always been there to, um, we lived next to each other when we lived in Toronto, you know, like we both moved to Toronto. We were best friends there. Like you, I think that there's something to be said about um, the kind of, um, uh, extreme set of circumstances that you get put in when you're in a fine arts program that kind of bonds you for life like siblings.
Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Bye, everyone. See you, Allie. Thanks for joining us. Awesome. I think I can jump in here now. Um, throughout this process, now we have a few questions come in via email, chat, and so forth. So um, I'm going to throw some questions that we've received up to the floor, and uh, potentially you guys can uh, ask away. I'm assuming no, you know, order, but step in wherever you feel free. So one of the first questions we've had is what kind of jobs are available to those who graduate with a BFA in theater or visual arts? Okay, well, um, I can jump in off the top, I guess. Um, you would be surprised. I mean, you know, I know because, you know, I was young once, way, way back in 1902. And my parents said to me, you're going into theater. What are you going to do with a theater degree? You're going to be broke for the rest of your life. But you know what? I did okay. Because, and and, and today, compared to back then, uh, there is such a... Uh, a a more broad range of, uh, of places that you can that you can uh, get employment with a theater degree, because you can be you can be an actor uh, in theater, film, uh, commercials, radio. Uh, you can do voiceover work uh, for, for video games and animation and advertising and and radio work. All those people, they're all they're all actors. Uh, there, there's blogging and internet videoing. Um, you can direct. You can write. Uh, you can be dialect coaches. You can you can build and paint sets. You can do costume fabrication and, and build props and furniture and uh, be a lighting technician, uh, sound technician. Uh, be, you can be involved in the recording industry. Uh, you can be running crew on shows. Uh, you can be running crew in concerts. You can you can be uh, uh, stage managers all over the all over the country and and beyond. Uh, lighting and sound and set and costume designers you can do that you can be tour managers production managers technical directors house managers marketing directors you can get into public relations some of our students have become lawyers and i'm not saying that we train you to be a lawyer but some of the basic skills that you learn in theater you can apply to a lot of other areas so um if you want to this is me telling you from the bottom of my heart, you can have a career in the arts. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't. It's not easy. It's not easy. You have to work really, really hard to do it. But you can do it. And we have had a ton of success, as Ali was telling you. You know, we've had some people who have done extremely well, but we've had a lot. We do have an awful lot of our graduates that, that do make a living in the industry. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I'll maybe just answer that from the uh, visual arts side of things. And if Larry and, and Andrew or anyone wants to jump in as well. Um, yeah, so sometimes the way I answer that question is, um, is, is I, I, say it, I say that if you are interested in doing anything in the arts, this would be the first degree that you would want to get. Okay, so if you if you do want to you know become a, a curator or a gallery director, um, you know really it's so broad. So if you can just just anything that you can think of that is sort of in the arts, this is a this is a great foundational degree for that. Okay, um, similar to the theater program, you know we've had students that have gone on to uh, become architects. So do a BFA and then do a master's in architecture. That is a, a great degree. Um, art therapy. Um, we've had students that have gone into medicine. What a visual arts degree gives you is not only a sense of creativity and, and also you know, hand-eye coordination, experiential learning, all those things. It also gives you critical thinking skills, creative thinking skills, and those are really important skills that can be applied to really any profession and are really desirable uh, traits to have and, and a really a desirable kind of uh, skills to have, problem solving. So yes, you know, you could become an art conservationist, you could become an animator, a graphic designer, um, design uh, video games. Um, for some of these things, you would need to go on to do you know, uh, a more uh, specific niche-oriented diploma or degree in that area. Uh, many of our students become educators. 
they go on to uh, to do um, you know to, to to do an education degree at Memorial. Memorial has fantastic uh, master's programs, graduate programs, programs in education. So you could become a teacher, you could become a professor if you went on to do an MFA degree. So for example, so huge amount of things. Uh, as as I was just mentioning as well when Ali was talking. It is absolutely incredible to see how many of our students are, are currently working in the arts. You know, you go to St. John's, they are gallery directors, they're, um, they're working, um, it's like too many to list, but it's a great, like there's the options are almost endless. And yes, as Jerry said, it's, I know that there's a kind of a, often a, a sort of a, a, a a sense that, you know, what, what are you going to do in the arts, the starving artist? But look, that is not art. The arts is a profession. It's work just like anything else. And, you know, to get a professional degree in that area is your first step. And I just want to also add to that, that a lot of other universities have, when you're doing a BFA, will ask you to choose a discipline, either painting and drawing or sculpture or animation, or that's what, you know, that was my experience at least. At, at Grenfell, you get such a breadth of knowledge and um, interdisciplinarity that you probably can't find in other places, you know, as much as as um, at Grenfell. So you have this wide range of experience when you're done your fourth year where you've kind of touched upon all these different kinds of subjects and you can choose what to specialize in or what kind of tickles your fancy more than other things, right? So it's super unique in that way where you get this super great perspective on all everything that's happening in the arts so yeah i just wanted to mention that yeah that's great thanks larry awesome fantastic fantastic guys uh, another question is how much is tuition and what kind of scholarships are available i can probably answer the uh, tuition one so um memorial university actually has one of the most affordable tuition rates in english-speaking canada we are the only university in the province of Newfoundland and Labrador, and our government does place a high emphasis in education. So they basically subsidize about 80% of the cost for you to go to school at Memorial University. So for uh, Newfoundland and Labrador students, if there's anyone joining us uh, from the province, it's $2,555 for a full academic year. So that's a full year. And domestic students, if you're in uh, another part of Canada, it's $3,330. And for international students, it's $11,400. And again, these are some of the most affordable rates actually in English speaking Canada. So you do get a hands on, amazing, world class education at Memorial University and indeed Grenfell Campus, whether it's our uh, Bachelor of Fine Arts programs or any other program we do offer at Memorial University. I did have another question that came in. I said, what if my marks aren't high enough to apply to Memorial University? So you do have a couple of options. Uh, provincially in Newfoundland, Labrador, the College of the North Atlantic have what's called a uh, transition program. So basically you can go to CNA and they have many campuses throughout the province of Newfoundland, Labrador, and you can upgrade your marks and then apply to Memorial University. Um, if that's not an option for you folks, uh, you can also apply uh, under special admissions, uh, you fill out our application process and you have to submit a couple of extra pieces of paperwork. Please get in contact with us for that. Or you can apply as a mature student if you're over 21. So certainly if your marks aren't there, uh, don't feel like all hope is lost. If uh, you know the BFA program is really of interest to you, uh, please get in contact with us, have a chat with us, and we can find out a way to uh, to get your ball, your ball rolling to uh, to get you into um, into Grenfell Campus and Memorial University. I had a question here on the Facebook one, which was very interesting. I just have to bring it up here. Uh, so one is person said, uh, this may have been discussed, but I missed it from the beginning. But what's been happening with classes due to COVID-19? Somebody mentioned that distance is not really an option. So how that's how is that working now? Uh, perhaps a very, very uh, relevant question in uh, today's climate, in today's day and age. So I'll hand it to Jerry and uh, Ingrid and uh, even Larry can chime in how that's working for them for the theater program and the visual arts program. Sure. 
Okay. Well, I'm not going to lie to you. It hasn't been easy. Uh, it's it's a challenge. It's a challenge to teach theater, live theater, uh, over the internet. Um, we can talk about concepts, but when it comes to actually sharing that theatrical experience of one person talking to another and getting the information that the other person is giving you by looking at them and and uh, you know it's that it's that thing we call chemistry. I like to think of it as. I, as an actor, give you as an actor a gift. You receive that gift, react to it, and then you give me a gift back. And it goes back and forth like that. And that's what chemistry is all about. That's very difficult to do. When you're doing like what I'm doing right now, I'm looking at a little black dot on my computer. And if I want to see what the other person is saying, I have to look away and then it doesn't look like I'm looking at you. So it's tricky. It's very, very difficult. Uh, It's a bit like doing a whole bunch of camera close-ups where there's not another actor in the room and we 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 tend to want to focus on live theater so it has been very very difficult but we are finding uh, that we're able to do um more kind of text analysis work more um uh, uh small scene work monologue work that sort of thing um and fortunately very very fortunately we're actually back on campus now. All, all of our students are back on campus. We are teaching our classes. We've gone through a ton of safety protocol to make this happen. And uh, our students are all back. The first years are not yet, but the second and third and fourth year students are back on campus. And uh, we are having our classes in person again. We're all masked, so there's still a little bit of you know, stuff to deal with. But... Um, we're finding that it just it gives you that personal contact and interaction that is so important in theater and it also gives our tech students you know some some uh, personal instruction and, and a little more immediate instruction as well and they get to actually deal with the tools because they're here um so that's how we're dealing with it right now and we're we're all hoping really hoping that we can be back in person uh, you know, in the fall would be great. But if we're not in person in the fall, and unless things get really a lot worse in the province, uh, I think we're probably going to be delivering the theater program the same way that we're delivering it right now. So it will be masked. Everybody will be allotted to their room, and there's all going to be <clears throat> all kinds of safety protocol. Um, <clears throat> but, but yeah, I mean, um, you know, we're, we're really trying to deliver the classes as best we can. It's a challenge. Uh, but so far... You know, we're, we're getting through it. And I think what we the way that we have redesigned a lot of our courses because of this um, has 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 made what we offer just as exciting, uh, just a little bit different. It's also opened up a, a lot of opportunities for us because now we can actually bring in artists that we maybe couldn't afford to, couldn't have afforded to bring in or were too busy to come in couldn't just pick up and leave Toronto or New York or London and and uh, come to Corner Brook for a couple of for a few months um, we can get those people here now because it, you know if we do if we do go online um, those people are available and we've had some wonderful master class teachers we've had uh, Petrina Bromley for instance who is uh, just uh, you know had to shut down her uh, performance in Come From Away which is one of the biggest hits Canada has ever had on Broadway well we had her as a master class teacher last year we've had uh, you know some of the top voiceover teachers in the country we had one of those uh, people teaching our students as well last year so we're able to reach a lot farther than we could so that's a positive um, but yeah, it, it, you know, again, I'll say it, it, it certainly hasn't been easy, but we are coping and we're doing it, I think quite well. And, uh, we're hoping that, you know, we'll be in person again in the fall. Thanks, Terry. Um, I'll just say a few words about, about visual arts. Um, so visual arts, unlike theater, we are not back in person. Um, we went remote uh, when we when we were hit by the pandemic a year ago in in March actually um, and so that sort of happened really quickly and then for the fall semester and the winter semester so from September until the present we have managed to pivot um, and we are offering all of our visual arts courses, through remote delivery at this point. 
which is absolutely incredible. So what we've done is um, the courses that were absolutely not possible to deliver remotely. So there were, there were courses that were designed 100% to get to know certain technologies, let's say certain print tech, uh, uh, print processes, for example, those courses, there were certain courses you, we just couldn't do online. But what happened was our professors created courses, created new courses that delivered the same or similar skill sets in those areas, but were able to be offered remotely. So, um, yeah, so currently the School of Fine Arts building is open and accessible to all of our students on a sign-up basis, but the courses themselves are being offered remotely, and which is actually pretty similar to what pretty much most universities and most visual arts programs are doing across Canada. There are some that are offering either hybrid courses or some in-person courses, but as I said, right now, we're just doing them uh, remotely. It's you know, there's upsides and there's downsides to it. There's actually a surprising number of upsides. We have found in general that it has suddenly opened up our program to a much larger um, kind of base of students. We, we suddenly have students from St. John's, from remote parts of, of the province, you know, small communities on the Northern Peninsula, uh, you know, we have a student up in Rigolette, for example, that is completing their degree, you know, from a very northern community in Labrador. Uh, we have students living in Barbados, in uh, Calgary, in Toronto. So what, it's, what has happened is it's, yes, it's, it's different, uh, but it's amazing that we have been able to do that and there has been a lot of advantages to it. Currently, Memorial University has not made a decision or an announcement as to whether courses will be in-person or remote delivery in September in the fall 2021 semester. Um, similar to, to theater, at that time, we, we may possibly decide to go to a kind of a, rem or a hybrid model of remote and in-person, but at this time, um, yeah, like I said, all of our courses are remote, so you can take them from anywhere in the in the world. Right now, our students are doing that. In the coming semesters, you will have to stay tuned and just keep in touch with us, and we'll let you know how they're being offered. Awesome. Great answers, folks. Uh, I think in the interest of time, we'll probably clue it up uh, now, but certainly... Um, in the chat on Facebook, I have left uh, Ingrid's contact information, Jerry's contact information, uh, also uh, the student recruitment account at Grenfell Campus. If you have any questions whatsoever about Grenfell Campus, visual arts, theater, technical theater, please, please reach out to us so we can have a conversation with you, a chat, and so forth. I did a, a draw just then for the Grenfell Campus hoodie and prize pack and the winner was diane george hopefully you're still Ooh. i will leave my email address in the uh, the chat section so you can uh, reach out with me with your hoodie size and we will get a uh, a granville campus um prize pack out to you shortly um i think that's it so basically uh, also a big big huge thanks to faculty member andrew testa who actually pulled a lot of this together it was a lot of work behind the scenes and uh, even though you're not able to see his face. He did a, a brilliant job pulling this all together. So thanks a million, Andrew. So uh, we're going to sign off. But again, uh, thank you so much for joining us. This was uh, very informative, fantastic. And certainly thanks to Jerry, Ingrid, and Larry, and um, Shereen and Allison for, uh, for joining us as well. And um, signing off. And uh, please, please get in touch with, uh, with us if you have uh, questions about uh, anything. Take care. Thanks for joining us, folks. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Hey, thanks for coming along. Thanks. Have a good evening. Bye. Bye-bye.